Hola Mujerones, we are back here with some very good interviews, the Mujeron podcast. Thank you guys so much for tuning in again. This is my first interview after baby, so it's a really special one. And I'm so excited to have my good friend, Daisy Lopez. She has, we have connected for a while now, right, Daisy? And I feel like I have been planning on having you on the podcast since we connected back in like 2020, I believe, early 2020. Um, But I wanted to share a little bit about Daisy so you guys can get an idea and what we're going to be talking about. Uh, Daisy is a visibility coach for women of color, coaches, and creator of the Liberated Latina. Her signature profitable presence frameworks helps her clients uncover their voice, amplify their message, and become sought after by their best clients consistently. So if you are thinking about launching your program, you have a program or any type of product where you are a leader, you want to be a person of influence, this is definitely going to help you. Today, we're going to be talking about how to reclaim your voice to expand your impact. And no matter what you're doing, if you're on social media and you follow our page, more than likely you are working on really creating impact right now. So I want you to stick around so that you can learn more on how you can do that. Daisy, muchas gracias for being here with us today. Uh, Un placer. I am so excited to be on this podcast. And yeah, we connected, I think it was like June of last year. It's It's been a hot minute. Um, and this is the first time we're actually reconnecting since baby, which I'm so excited. Um, so yeah, thank you for having me on here. And I feel like, um, I don't know why it feels like two years. It has just been like one, (laughs) but, um, I, I love seeing you grow. I love seeing you just keep on pushing, right? I think that a lot of times we have like these ideas we really have this purpose that we're going after and it's not easy so it's incredible to see women like you who I saw start and you're continuing to grow and and push that mission that message that is so important to you and it's amazing so congratulations on all your success and I'm excited to be Mm -hmm. sharing all of that knowledge here with our Mujerones today. I want you to first tell us what experiences led you to do what you are doing now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. It's been, it's been a journey. So when you were talking about the beginning stages, I was like, oh my gosh, yes, you definitely saw me in the beginning stages. And yeah, it's been, it's been such a journey. And when I first started out, well, I guess before that I was a um, financial services consultant for almost three years. And um, I was, you know, working with clients in a very different capacity in, you know, with financial institutions and stuff. But that's where I really saw how beautiful it was to have those client connections and be able to support people in achieving any sort of certain goal. Um, And I ended up leaving that long story short, you know, first generation Cuban American. And I definitely fell down the path of, okay, this corporate path is the American dream quickly realized that wasn't where I I ultimately wanted to be. Um, So I made that shift into entrepreneurship. And yeah, I just got started. You know, I I knew that I wanted to serve Latinas and women of color in some way. And I knew that I had a big message on my heart. Um, And I just got started. And it's been really cool to see it unfold to what I'm doing now, which is ultimately such a reclamation process. It was a reclamation process for myself to reconnect to the true essence of my voice and what that really was and what that really meant for me. And as that unfolded, I realized that coaches were coming to me really wanting that juice for themselves and being tugged in all these different directions of strategy and this, this is what I should do, this is what I have to do. And really wanting to come back to that essence, to that core of their voice. And from that seeing their impact, being able to flourish in such an easier way. Um, So really the past few months hasn't been, hasn't felt like a push, you know, it it really hasn't felt like I've had to keep pushing to keep going. It's been a pull. I just naturally feel like this is where I belong. Like this is my home. Yes. I, I love that because I feel like anyone who is creating has gone through that, right? Where you're starting at a 
okay, what do I need in order to start this big idea, this project, whatever it is that we really, really want to create. And it's like, what are the steps to get there, right? And a lot of them are still tangible. Like you get the, all right, here's step A and here's how you get to step Z, you know? But it's like, there's still something that sometimes holds us back. Even till this day after launching Mujer on Movement, the podcast, the university, like the next step, there's always that hesitation sometimes where I'm not good enough or I don't have enough followers I don't have enough experience. Who am I to teach these people something? Or who am I to launch this new big idea? And I love what you're saying because there's, like I said, all of us can somehow relate to what you're talking about. And I think that that is something that we need to work on as a community, right? Because there's so many more things for us Latinos that hold us back. So I'm so excited and, and it makes me so happy to see that you're really helping our people, but also our women who um, I know that for us, now that I'm a mom, it's like, damn, there's so many more of those voices that come, you know, that you're, you, you go through these things. And I wanted you to kind of explain to us, what do you mean by that voice? Maybe if you're listening to us, you're kind of confused or you know, how can you kind of elaborate on that? Yeah, for sure. So when I think of voice, I mean, obviously, in, in the capacity of being a coach, it, that can translate into your message, how you show up online, right? What content do you put out? How do you communicate to your clients? But really, in any space that you walk in, even if it's a boardroom, a classroom, you have influence. Mm. You're there, you're in the room. And that voice is really that presence that you carry with you that makes people know that you're there. Does that make sense? Yeah. There's a difference uh, between, I'm oh, sorry. Sorry, I was just gonna say that is so relatable. Like you said, no matter where you're at, walking into a classroom, um, maybe you work in the financial uh, industry, no matter where you're going, you do have influence. You, even if you're a manager or it doesn't matter what you do, um, definitely Come on. that's something. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> we, we, we have influence at all times. And for me, when we talk about reclaiming our voice, it's really reclaiming our presence. And knowing that we have such power wherever we go, because if we think about it, we're, we're all created of pure energy. Like what are atoms? What are cells? They're accumulations of energy. So of course, when we're really tapped into our presence, we're able to create that impact simply by just being there. We don't even have to say a word. And the way that I've found that we get to get to that point that so often I think is overlooked is being really honest with yourself, being really honest with what you want and being really honest with all the reasons why you think you can't get that, right? It's a lot easier to avoid the uncomfortable things, but what I found is that the, what we avoid persists. And whenever we step into any sort of room or if you're launching something especially, the strategy that you're trying to use is really a channel that's going to amplify what's at the source. Mm -hmm. So it's so important that as we're looking to embark on any creative endeavor, when you're looking to launch something, when you're looking to go for that next level job, when you're looking to do anything, it's being really brutally honest with what you want and what are the underlying flavors of emotion and thoughts that you think are preventing you from having that. Yes, getting real with ourselves is not easy, but it's definitely something that can take you to the next step. What would you say are some simple, like tangible shifts that we can make in order to do this? Mm, really, really beautiful question. And the answer is so simple, but very confronting. <laughs> yeah. And this is what Let's I do. Get them out of their comfort zone. Yes. Listen, <laughs> I went live today for the first time in a group of half a million people. Oh, wow. So this is very fresh for me right now. I am constantly pushing up against those comfort zones and I'm no exception. Like I'm very big on if I'm talking the talk, I got to walk the walk, right? The number one thing that has allowed me to break those barriers time and time again is simply feeling 
the feelings that are uncomfortable. So I had this scheduled. I, I mean, it was optional. I wanted to do this, right? Because my, my inner self wanted, it was like being pulled to this for some reason. My brain was freaking out. But I knew that that was my truth. And I was having so much drama around why I, I was no one to do that. Who did I think I was, right? What if I did something wrong? What if I messed it up? All of these things. And the most simple way to clear these things is to bypass the mind and get into your body and feel it. Go right into the middle of the feeling because you're going to realize that when you start feeling it, it starts dissipating. And you're like, oh, wait, this is actually nothing to fear. Oh, wait, actually, this is a really old story that I've had for a long time. And I don't need to hang on to this anymore. Mm -hmm. Right. And the feeling gets to then move through you and out of you. And the new empowering story that you've been trying to journal about time and time again, que like no te entra, it just doesn't land for you. It actually gets to land. So when you do that hard thing, when I went live, I wasn't nervous anymore. I was fully in my power. Mm -hmm. I was like, no, I got this. I felt all the uncomfortable muck and it's gone now. Now I get to just serve. Now I get to just be me. I love that. So I, I would say one thing that you can do if you're listening to us is maybe once a week really push yourself to do something that is so scary and uncomfortable and it can be something as simple as like going live right even with your own following or um calling that one person that maybe didn't sign up last time or didn't end up buying your product last time or maybe that job that they haven't called you back or something that's really uncomfortable like push yourself to maybe do that one thing. I, I want to take that in, in my own life. And now um, that I'm coming back into creating and just going back to work, really pushing myself to do that. A lot of these things have to do with how we present ourselves on social media, right? Especially if you're working on a side hustle, a passion project, or a business, um, coaching, whatever it might be. What would you say are some of the things that we can do to make um, that amplifying our online visibility and growing our own community? What would you say we can do? The first thing that came to mind is don't overcomplicate it. Mm, I love don't overcomplicate it. And I know that that's the tendency. And the reason why that tendency is there, it's because our brains are looking for safety. So we think that the more we do, the safer we're going to be, right? The more that we can control certain situations and notice that that's an emotion. There's an emotion driving that. So again, we come back to like really critically thinking and it's not even not, it's not even so much thinking, it's really feeling like what, what is driving this action? And I will say, this is where things completely changed in my business from that hustle, push, push, push to like, no, I'm feeling pulled to this is looking at, okay, this is what I want to do, right? I want to get to this goal. I want to attract these number of clients. I want to launch this thing, whatever it is. And looking at the actions that I'm putting into place and critically asking myself, what's the energy that's driving this? Is it scarcity? Is it fear? Or is it empowerment? Am I like, nah, I want to really do this, right? The live in that Facebook group, I had to ask myself, am I doing this out of scarcity? Or am I doing this because I know I can freaking do this and I want to serve? So mm -hmm. that's that's a couple of things right off the bat. Don't overcomplicate it and really look at what are you doing and what's the energy driving it? Because even if you do less things, but the energy driving it, the fuel is clean. It's of love. It's of power. It's going to go way further than going into action, 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 hustle, 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 fear, 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 scarcity, scarcity. And then you look around and you're like, wait. This isn't having the impact that I wanted it to have because we can all sense that, right? So that's the first thing because when you're being really present with yourself, you can be really present online. You can be really present when you're alive. It's like that effervescence, that flavor that people are like, nah, I dig her. Where has she been, right? Mm -hmm. um, so those are a few things that have really helped me. And also don't be afraid to say the bold thing. Don't be afraid to say that thing that like kind of gives you a little chill. You're like, ooh, can I say that? But it's the <laughs> truth, right? And you know that your ideal person, your 
or maybe you're, you know, if you're a manager, the person below you, you know that it's something that when they hear it, it's going to be for their good. It's going to be for their elevation. It's going to be for their upgrade. Don't be afraid to say the hard things. That's what elevates you as a leader versus a follower. I love that. Sometimes we say the thing that, like you're saying, the bold thing, and someone needed to hear that, even if it's yourself. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So you just need to say it out loud. And I feel like that's something that we can relate in so many ways, even in relationships at home, right? With your family or something, quality over quantity, really being present with yourself and even saying that bold thing around people that maybe need to hear that as well. So I love this entire topic of really reclaiming our voice because it can really be in so many ways and aspects in our life. So thank you so much, Daisy, for sharing all of these amazing gems. I want you to tell us a little bit about what you're up to and where people can find you, if there's anything that we can support you with as well right now. Yeah, of course. I'm always kicking it on Instagram. So you can follow me at The Liberated Latina. I also have The Liberated Latina podcast, which we got to get you on. So now yeah. <laughs> we have to have you on there. And at the time that we're recording this, um, I'm going to have my first ever live masterclass to dive even deeper into these processes and the three elements that are an absolute must have if you want to be a sought after coach service provider online. So by the time this airs, I'll have the replay. So you can just shoot me a DM on Instagram for that replay. And yeah, that's pretty much what I got going on. Amazing. Thank you so much again for connecting with us, for continuing to support us through Mujer on Movement and just being a part of this community. I love being a part of your tribe as well. Thank you so much for welcoming us. And I hope Mujer on is that this helped you guys somehow. Again, make sure you connect with Daisy at The Liberated Latina. Uh, we'll be obviously putting all of her contact info and information on the show notes. And if you guys have any questions, make sure you DM her. Anything else, Daisy, that maybe you want to tell our listeners um, on what we talked about today? Number one, they're so lucky to have you. Like this platform is amazing and this community is amazing. So don't take her for granted because you're so amazing and this community is seriously like so rare to come across these days. And I'm just so honored to be here. And the second one is, yeah, you know, you have a special message and you have a unique voice and you're here for a reason. So don't be afraid to let it come out of you and through you because you don't know who it's here to serve. Mm, so beautiful. We all have a mission here. So thank you again, Daisy Mujerones. Gracias again for tuning in. And we will see you guys next week. Bye.